Today we're going to make an amplifier for your phone that will increase the volume when you're playing music or other sounds. First thing I'm going to do is start a new project in Tinkercad and rename it. We don't want the silly Tinkercad name. It should be your name and then amp. Next, I want to change the size of my work plane. I'm going to come down here to where it says edit grid in the bottom right corner. Make sure it says millimeters and I'm going to change it to 120 by 120 and click update grid. That will make it the correct size for our 3D printer. Now I'm ready to begin. To make the amplifier itself, I'm going to need a cylinder. So I'm going to grab my cylinder and I'm going to resize it. I'm going to click on the corner square at the bottom and I'm going to make both of these 70 millimeters. So 70 for that one, 70 for that one. So it should be a perfect circle. For my height, I'm going to click on the top square and we're going to make it 110 millimeters tall. So now I have my cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's selected and I'm going to duplicate it. Here's my duplicate button. And while it looks like nothing happened, if I use my arrow key to move it over, I can see I have my second cylinder right there. Now, this second cylinder is going to be a slightly different size. We're going to cut out a hole inside here to hollow out our cylinder, so we need this one to be a little smaller. I'm going to click on the corner square again, and this time it's going to be 60 by 60. And my height is going to be 100. So now it's a little skinnier and a little shorter than our first cylinder. While this smaller one is selected, I'm going to click on the gray stripes for the hole and turn it into a hole shape. Now we're going to use our align tool to line these up perfectly. I'm going to take my mouse up here to the white space, drag a box over both of them, and I should have two shapes selected. Now I'm going to go to my align tool or press the letter L and click. We have our three axes, X, Y, and Z, and we're going to change all three of them. On my X and Y, I want the center button for both of them. So there's my X, there's my Y, and for my Z, my up and down, I want the top button because I want the opening to be up here at the top. So once I do that, it should be perfectly centered and I'm ready to group. I want to make sure it still says two shapes and I'm going to come up here and click group. Now I have my perfect cylinder that is hollowed out in the center. The next thing I'm going to do is rotate this. I want to look for this top double arrow and this will bring up my protractor and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees to the right. So now it's angled a little bit. Next stop is my base. I'm going to grab a cube shape, my box, and I'm going to change the size. So corner square and I'm going to make it 70 by 80. So here's my box. I'm going to select both shapes again, go back to a line, and this time just on my X and Y, I'm going to click center and center. So now it's perfectly centered on there. I'm going to go ahead and click off. And I'm going to click on just the cylinder and use my right arrow key to move it over onto the box a little more. So it looks like this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this piece that sticks out on the bottom. So I'm going to rotate a little so I can see the bottom. And I'm going to come up here to get my work plane tool. 
I'm going to bring my work plane tool over and put it on the bottom of my red box, not on the cylinder, but on the red box. That moves my work plane down here. I'm going to grab another box shape. And for this one, I'm just going to drag it out till it covers everything underneath. It doesn't have to be a specific size. And I'm going to turn it into a hole. I'm going to rotate my work plane around so I can see all three shapes. And I'm going to drag a box over all three. I should say shapes three. And I'm going to click group. Now I should have gotten rid of that bottom piece. Everything is centered. We're ready to go. I'm going to click on my work plane tool again and just click up here in the white space to get rid of that. Now notice my shape is a little off the work plane. I'm just going to drag it back in here and kind of get it as close to the center as I can. The last step on the body is to add a slot for your phone. I'm going to grab another box shape. And I'm going to drag this box shape out until it is longer than my cylinder. All right, so we want it to go kind of all the way across the work plane. The only measurement that is super duper specific here is going to be the width, how wide it is. So that has to be about the width of your phone, just a little tiny bit more so it has a little wiggle room in there. So you're going to measure how wide your phone is in millimeters. For my phone, I'm going to say it's about eight millimeters wide. I'm going to click on a corner square and come down here and I'm going to make it 10. So it's a little bit more than eight millimeters. If your phone is usually in a case, measure it with the case on and don't forget to give it a little bit extra. Now I'm going to come here to my height and I'm just going to drag it up nice and tall. We want this to cut through our cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate it or actually I'm going to lift it first. I'm going to move this over here so it cuts through. And what I want to do is I want to lift this up and make it a little shorter here so that the bottom of this cube is sitting on top of the box here. So right about there. Now I'm going to turn this 45 degrees opposite this cylinder. For the cylinder, we went to the right. For this, we're going to rotate to the left. And again, I want to rotate it 45 degrees. I want to make sure it does not go all the way through the cylinder. There should be a little bit here at the bottom for it. And I'm going to turn it into a hole. I'm going to go ahead and drag my box to select all of the shapes. And then I'm going to click group and that should cut the slot in there for my phone. Now I'm ready to customize. At this point, you can go in and add any decorations to it you want. We've got all of our different options in here. Um, our basic shapes, our design starters, creatures and characters, and so on. Have some fun. Experiment with it. When you have completed customizing it, go ahead and click Export. Make sure you select everything in the design and choose STL. That will get it in the right format, and you'll be able to then upload it into Classroom and turn it in for printing.